fortunate enough to have driven the Leaf back in Japan some time ago. It was an absolute trip. I mean, the e-pedals, the charging stations, the cleanliness of it all. It really puts you in the mood to make the switch from conventional to electric. But the Philippines and Japan, and although we're just really four hours apart, couldn't be more different from one another even if we tried. And I'm just talking about the traffic situation and the availability of charging stations, which begs the following questions. Um, what's it really like to drive an EV in Philippine traffic, and more specifically, an EV with an e-pedal? And then, if you don't have access to a wall socket, just exactly how are you supposed to charge these vehicles? And finally, more recently, if you do get an EV, what kind of tax breaks or incentives are you really looking at? We'll go through this as a proper review, but we'll answer those specific questions and perhaps even more with this, the 2022 Nissan LEAF. Despite being a doorway to the future, well, actually, four doors into the future. Five. Five, sorry, five doors into the future. Its design is actually, well, pretty straightforward. It's nothing ostentatious, like a BMW iX, uh, links are up here or somewhere down below, but it does pique interest and will turn a header too because, well, its design and look is something that's pretty foreign on Philippine roads. You get the V-Motion design language, which is evident on the front clip that extends onto the hood and to the rest of the vehicle. For the Philippine market, the EV gets halogen projector headlights paired with LED daytime running lights and fog lights found on the lower bumper, which, yeah, I gotta admit, I did expect a little bit more. Now down the side, the Leaf comes with an upswept belt line that extends to the rear of the vehicle along with blacked out C-pillars to give this, I like this, electric hatchback the appearance of a floating roof. You got 16s on 55 series tires, disc brakes all around with of course regenerative braking and 155 millimeters of ground clearance and cameras on the side mirrors which are part of the around view monitor which is just really one of the many Nissan intelligent mobility functions found in the Leaf. At the rear, the hatchback comes with a more angular look with large L-shaped LED taillights that extend to the blacked out C-pillars. It also comes with a rear bumper that is chiseled yet sleek, giving it a more aerodynamic look. It also comes with a blue accent piece found here on the lower diffuser of the vehicle. A subtle hint that the EV is not your ordinary gasoline or diesel powered hatchback. Good God, where's the tambucho? Are you looking to compare prices for your brand new car? Well then, visit autodeal.com.ph Select the car that you want and choose to request for a quote from our network of over 500 official dealer partners nationwide. Within minutes, you'll start receiving offers from the dealers you've selected. All that's left is for you to select the deal that's best for you. Get the best deal on AutoDeal. When you open her up, you are looking at more than 650 liters of space. That is redonkulous. I mean, look, you can fit a Balik Bayan box with the tonneau on and still have space on either side for luggage and whatnot. If you want more space, you can fold the second row to almost 850 liters. That translates to, in Filipino, three Balik Bayan boxes. Voila, stick. The thing though is, if you want to load more Balik Bayan boxes, you're better off using the door uh, instead of the door here at the back because, well, it's not a lip. It's actually like a mountain that you have to push the boxes up and through. So that actually might be a pretty big hassle. Ah, this, this is very important. Let's go up front. I want to show you what's under the hood. The electric motor produces 148 horses and a whopping 350 newton meters of torque on a car that weighs less than 2,000 kilograms. And that motor is very, very gorgeous looking. To charge her, you open this second hood and you take your provided charger, which is given to every leaf, unlike Apple. They give you your own charger so that you can charge the vehicle 
if you have the capability to do so, uh, if you have access to a 220 volt outlet. But if you do that with this charger, it'll take forever and a day, uh, especially if the battery is completely depleted. You can, however, uh, install a wall charger in your own home and that'll top you off in about anywhere between six to eight hours. Even faster if you go to a gasoline station that provides high voltage and that can give you about 80% of your battery in about 40 to 60 minutes, which is okay. But it's not all good news. See, much like VHS and Betamax, those of you that are old enough to remember, I found out the hard way that Nissan's port is actually different from everybody else's. To put it plainly, it's a Type 1. So I tried to charge at the mall like an SM, but those are for European spec cars. To put it plainly, Type 2. So I figured I'd charge at a shell like the one in Mamplasan. Unfortunately, that too is for European spec cars, Type 2. There is one station on EDSA that is compatible to the LEAF, but unfortunately when we went, that stand was on the fritz. So for this review, our only options were either to charge it at home or bring it to a Nissan dealership, which you can for free and they'll top you up for as long as you have the automobile. And that's absolutely awesome. But the problem is I live in a condo without a wall socket in the garage. And well, I just didn't have the time to go to a dealership. So it was open the door, whip out the extension cords, drive the car into the lobby and charge it as best you can at the office day. Weird? Yeah. Fun? Oh, absolutely. And it's not like it's gonna cost you much, really, because last year, this was a year ago, it was estimated that a full charge of the Nissan LEAF from home would cost you roughly about 360 pesos. 360 pesos. Now, I understand with what inflation is going on and the rising prices of goods, so let's double that to 720 pesos. You're looking at 720 pesos, mind you, this is a ballpark figure, to charge a car that can travel 300 kilometers. At 720 pesos, you're looking at roughly today, 10 liters of gasoline, which to be honest with you, there is no car out there, even if you were to strip it and make it a rolling gas tank, that will do 300 kilometers on 10 liters of fuel. Nope, just not gonna happen. At the rear, well, this is gonna be quick actually because there's not much back here. Um, the leg room and the head room is A-OK. -okay. Uh, that's Jack's normal driving position. So a taller person up front and a shorter person in the back, no issues. You won't have space, however, for a third passenger because there is a tunnel. See, your feet will sort of like be high up and you'd probably put your chest in your knees. Now, it's odd that there is a transmission tunnel in an electric vehicle, but Nissan says because this is for high voltage wires that um, travel back and forth through the car, so they use that as a pathway. Uh, there are bottle holders on either doors, but really, and speakers, but really, that's about it. There are no charging points here, there are no air vents here, and there's also no center armrest to be found here in the middle. It's actually quite plain back here. I wish at the very least there would be charging points because this is an electric vehicle and everybody knows that almost everybody uh, has their own gadget. I will say that I don't know what it is about uh, second row seats of electric vehicles, but and, and I'm only talking about the iX here, but here too in the Nissan Leaf, the seats for some strange reader, and they're like super soft, su but supportive at the same time. And it's really comfortable. I mean, sans the, the, the lack of a little bit more leg room and well, the headroom is fine for me, but I could actually sit back here for quite some time. Jack, have you sat back here? Not yet. Dude, it's, it's, try it. It's actually pretty soft and comfortable. That's actually, I'm getting. It's not bad, I like it, I really like it. It's probably even more comfortable, well, no, no, man, it's as comfortable as the front seats. Ah, getting into the front seat, I'm gonna adjust from Jack's driving position to my driving position. As you can tell, it's manual. Uh, they probably do that for two very good reasons. One is to save as much money as possible and bring the costs down. And second, to bring also the weight down. I'm gonna turn the engine on and turn the air on. Engine? engine run uh what is it motor i'm gonna turn the motor on 
and turn the air conditioning on because it's starting to get warm. Um, okay, it may be a futuristic and EV vehicle, but it's actually still pretty straightforward inside the, the cabin for the driver. You have your instrument cluster up front as usual uh, with a large uh, LCD display that has that is your trip uh, computer and other functions like your, your charging systems and whatnot. Uh, and then you have uh, an additional analog uh, speedometer on the right hand side. The steering wheel is flat bottom, much like the Terra and the Navara actually. And then you've got buttons on your steering wheel, obviously, for your cruise and your audio functions, which are located in the center. Now, this is an 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I might add, which is great because everybody seems to look for those functions nowadays. Uh, underneath that are your very simple and easy to understand air controls, your power button found down below, and then here in the center is your gear nubbin. I can't call it a gear lever, but I'll call it a gear nubbin. Press to park, hold down the brake, and that's reverse. Pop it into drive, and then how do you put, how do you put it into neutral? I don't know how to put it in neutral, but then put it into park. Um, so again, uh, it's very easy to jump inside this car and just start driving immediately because it's actually pretty straightforward. The one thing that will take get us some getting used to is this function right here, the E pedal. I had the opportunity to drive this car with the e-pedal on in Japan. And now I want to take you on a drive to let you know just exactly what that e-pedal feels like, how it does drive inside Metro Manila traffic, and if we're going to actually get into an accident. Hopefully not. Before we do though, however, do like and subscribe our channel because we can create these videos just for you guys. Come on, Jack, let's go. Now, normally when it comes to the driving portion of our behind the wheel videos, we try to select roads that have, well, less traffic than usual so we can get a better feel of the automobile and really take it out and try and stretch its legs. This time around with the Leaf, it was quite the opposite. I wanted to do it in heavier traffic inside the Metro to show that, uh, well, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can really jump inside this automobile and start driving it immediately because it's pretty straightforward. It's like your average hatchback. And that the e-pedal, well, will actually take no more than a day or two to get used to. Now, with that being said, uh, I promised that I would try and impart exactly what it feels like to drive uh, the automobile with an e-pedal inside Metro Manila traffic. Okay. So to describe it that it drives like an electric golf cart is probably the easiest thing to compare it to. But I understand that there's a lot of people out there that have never actually ri driven a golf cart. So to simplify things, when you drive a conventional automobile and you step on the accelerator, once you release the accelerator, there is a lot of play, give, roll, so to speak. Inside the leaf, when the e-pedal is on, there is no roll, there is no play. So the amount of forward momentum that you get is dependent on just exactly how much you press on the accelerator. The less you press on the accelerator, the slower the car will get. And by doing so, I've actually been able to drive inside Metro Manila traffic without ever having to step on the brakes. Not to say that the car doesn't apply its brakes on its own. It does, as we come to a complete stop right now. When you release the accelerator, you feel the brakes really come on, and the lights at the rear, your brake lights, will go on. It's just that the car anticipates you to step on the accelerator again if you want to keep going, so you can play with just one pedal and drive around in Metro Manila traffic. Yes, it will definitely get some use, getting used to, especially when you depress the accelerator quite quickly and the car slows down quite, quite heavily so. So in that sense, you will learn to sort of like not release the accelerator way too much and rather release it at a slow pace to bring the car to a slow halt. Again, like I said, it's not something that you jump into immediately that you can get used to. It'll take a day or two. But of course, you can turn off the function of the e-pedal and just drive it like your average hatchback. Now, that being said, now that we're rolling again, my honest opinion of the e-pedal is that 
I actually do enjoy driving the automobile with the e-pedal on, or rather activated. Now, I asked Jack the same question, and he said yes. In most occasions, he does enjoy driving it as well, but when it comes to parking the automobile, putting in reverse or whatnot, he does like the fact that you can turn the e-pedal off because I guess that still takes some getting used to for him. In my case, I've actually gotten used to it, and I do believe I really can live with it. When driving, compared to the iX, which I think is a bit of a stretch really, but the noise vibration and harshness inside this automobile is nowhere near a premium automobile like the BMW. But I will say that on, on, on tamer roads, this really sounds like it's quieter in the sense that, well, there is no futuristic sound. There is sort of like a small bell when you put it in reverse. It's a very faint bell. But as when you propel the car forward, there is no hum. There's no Hollywood sound to it. It's very quiet. It can be unsettling at times, but I guess maybe it's the age in me that I actually enjoy the quietness, whether the radio's on or not. I, I do enjoy the fact that it's just sort of like sneaking around the city every so often. I do, I do enjoy that. But don't let that quietness fool you because as we previously mentioned, there is 148 horses uh, that is being pushed out by the electric motor and more importantly, 350 newton meters of torque. Uh, and it comes to you instantaneously because it is an electric vehicle. Uh, what I want to say also is that when you take it off eco, as I've, did, I've done right now, and the e-pedal is still on, uh, there's so much torque in this thing that if I were to floor it ever so quickly, I'm going to try, three, two, one. Whoa! Uh, the front end kind of comes loose um, because there is wheel spin that happens and I was then traveling at maybe 15 kilometers per hour when I buried the throttle. The power came in very quickly and the front started to dance. That's because, well, it's a front wheel drive car and all that torque is, well, going to make it dance. If you drive it properly, however, you know, which you should, then there are not going to be any issues uh, that will come around your way. It's just that, well, what I'm trying to get at is if you need to or want to turn and burn, you really can. On the highway though, I gotta say that it is definitely easy to drive. There are no complications with the car. The e-pedal works absolutely great. The greater distances that you have from the automobile in front of you, the e-pedal is just gives you even more confidence to work it and it's actually good practice. But it's just, it's just a very calm and easy pedal to work. The, the technology is very easy and, and the automobile drives well without worries. Oh, and must I mention too that you also have adaptive cruise. E-pedal or not, that thing works. So the overall driving experience is actually quite easy, even with the e-pedal. Like I said, it's not gonna take more than a day or two to get used to it. Um, inside the city traffic, and I've proven it in Metro Manila, it's really quite easy. Any, any Tom, Dick, or Harry, or in Tagalog, or Filipino rather, any, Enteng, Kuya Boy, or Marites will be able to get used to it very, very easily. So that answers the driving question. The second question is the charging. Well, they are far and few in between, but I gotta tell you that uh, corporations like Ayala are investing really, really heavily on electrification. And then you've got mall chargers like the ones that you can find in SM. Like you could go to the SM in Tagaytay and drive all the way to Baguio and juice up at these places so that you never run out of juice. And it's free. Well for now anyway. So that answers that question. And at the same time, uh, if you were a person that does have access to a wall outlet or can put a wall charger in your home and you're only going to the office, then it's really a breeze. You'll never have to go to any other charging station ever again because, well, you're only going to the office anyway. The last question is, well, incentives.
very well say that saving the planet is incentive enough. But then I realized you might actually unsubscribe to our channel, so please don't. The Nissan LEAF retails at 2,798,000 Philippine pesos. Now, it's expensive because, well, the technology is relatively new for our roads and you still have to build the community around it to be able to maintain it and service it. And then the 40 kilowatt battery, the lithium ion batteries are, well, because of the high demand all over the planet, those are very, very expensive. And then there's the fact that, yes, it is an EV, but it's still subject to the importation taxes when it comes into the Philippines. So all of that actually does add up. The incentives are that you'd be paying one-fourth of a full tank of gasoline to top this EV up. Second, your maintenance costs are lowered by like 20%. Change oil? What change oil? And then there's the fact that starting today, till 2030, the MMDA has advised that all EV vehicles are exempted from number coding in Metro Manila. Now, that may not be the biggest of things, but I like to know the fact that I can drive an automobile that I paid for any day of the week that I choose, instead of them telling me when I can and cannot drive it. Now, I'm not trying to vehemently defend the LEAF, but, you know, it, it basically Nissan got tired of waiting around and decided to roll the dice and bring it in for people that are want to make that switch and tired of the internal combustion engine. And so, here it is. However, I will say that because of its proprietary charging port, I will say that that is most definitely a step back here in the country. No arguments there. But as a father of two, because of its cleanliness and efficiency, I really believe that the LEAF is two steps forward.